I am going to spend the rest of my life and all the money. I'm going to make a billion dollars in Bitcoin. Like that's my goal. I want to make a billion dollars. I will deploy every penny back into fixing this train wreck we have. And that's the only reason I want to get rich from this. Otherwise, I would just be quiet. Uh, but the way I do things, see, this is like I come into a space and I'm like, I'm in, dude. Let's go. I want more. I want to be more, more involved. I want to meet more people because for me, it's exciting. Like it's fun. I don't play sports. I don't gamble. I mean, if I want to gamble, dude, I don't need to go to a casino. <laughs> I hate going to the casinos because I win 40 grand and then I got to go wait in line for like 12 minutes to get my bloody money. Uh, do this with crypto all day long. I'm not waiting in a, you know, in front of a fence and getting my picture taken. Freedom, though, if we just define freedom, um, and by the way, it is not free. Okay, it requires me to not be liked by people. I mean, I get hate mail, dude. Like, 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 like people go, and then you add my twin to it, who, you know, he'll say whatever, and they think half the people think I'm him. I mean, these people, like, they're so mean. Um, that's cool. You just got to put up with it, right? There's nothing in the five years, six years, seven years that I've studied in Bitcoin added on top of the 35 years of all the payment industry, the M&A, the real estate, the energy. Ain't one. There's not a hair to hanging out or a nail hanging out that gives me any doubt about Bitcoin. Card One Ventures CEO Gary Cardone says he plans to spend the rest of his life involved in Bitcoin and aims to make over a billion dollars investing in it. Then, he intends to reinvest every penny of his wealth into fixing societal issues, a noble cause. But why is he so confident that his Bitcoin allocation will help him achieve his goals? In his recent interview, he explains exactly why. With that being said, let's take a look at some clips from the interview with Gary Cardone. Please take a little moment to show your support by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks and enjoy the video. You know, you said something about your friends leaving college, starting their career and what their goals were. I, I think their goal should be like the right answer is, hey, I want to be free. It's not I want to own a house. I want to be a doctor. If you just go back to core principles, <clears throat> hey, I want to make two hundred million dollars. All right. Well, you can become an arms dealer, drug dealer, prostitute. Uh, you can go on social media and create a bunch of noise, be pretty unproductive and, and caustic to society. There's a lot of things you can do to make money. To be free. To be free is the goal. Okay, like, and, and now we have to now go, well, what does that mean? Because I don't think anybody actually can define free. I mean, I think I have a very, very good definition now. But even that definition is quite negative. It, it, half of it's negative. Half of my definition for free is freedom is to be able to say, no, I am not doing that. Uh, I mean, this last business I had that was probably worth the last, it was probably worth 800 million. And we ended up having to dump it for probably half because we couldn't get our brains out of our ass. But uh, and this is what happens when people's agendas change. You're building a business with someone and you start making a bunch of money and you realize, oh, your partner's not really in it for the money. They're in it for the trophies. But I'm in it for, I'll take my chips off the table and let's move to another table, please. Because I get, I get bored with businesses. Like once I figure out a game, I'm like, okay, I don't want to do this for the next 40 years, dude. I'm not going to learn anything. For me, that's part of my freedom. At 41 years old, I'd worked for one company for 17 years. The CEO of the company told me they were going to make a billion dollars in cash the next year. And I sold all my stock right after the phone call. Because I was like, dude, there ain't, there ain't no chance of us making a billion in cash unless we're going into the heroin business. And I ain't doing that. Uh, and they wouldn't have either, but he, he, they were trying to do a pivot. And I went, dude, your pivot's too heavy. Now, why am I bringing all that up? Because I stopped being free in that company. I was making $7 million a year. I'm not bragging, okay? I'm just telling you. I got a limo driver. I live on seven acres out in the country in England, dude, on a you know pristine river, Chalk Stream River. I mean, the 400-year-old house. The Brits hated an American owning this home. 
my neighbor was Tony Schechter, the racing car driver. You know, they don't, they, they didn't like all that change. Right. So I'm sitting there going, Hey, look, I've got, I'm having headaches all the time. I've got three telephones. They ring off the wall. Uh, I'm managing 600 people. I think this market's not, I think I've sponged everything out of this market that I can. And I'm starting not to have fun. And I'm sitting there going, okay, no, you can't just quit. I mean, nobody quits a, a career of 22 years. I'm like, why? What, why is it that I think I have to become a slave to the first industry that I went into? I called my boss up and said, six months, bro. You got six months. Knowing full well that it was more scary for me to leave that industry than it was to stay. My ego was the only thing keeping me there and the money. And ego is just money, okay? When you think about money, hey, it's just an ego thing, okay? Because, like, there's just not much more I need, dude, really. Uh, I mean, I could have a bunch of fancy boats. I just rented two jet skis for 500 bucks. I don't need to buy jet skis. I'm not going to use a bunch of jet skis. Even though I live on the water, I'm not going to use them every day. So, so, so freedom for me is to say, no, nope, I'm done. And then also to be able to say, yes. Yes, let's go to Turkey tomorrow morning the way I want to go to Turkey. Or... Yeah, let's go have a $4,000 dinner or let's go fishing for 20 bucks. It doesn't matter, right? But I have the freedom to say yes and no without equivocation, like, like full on, man. In other news, an article from Cointelegraph shares that Bitcoin has seen spikes after the presidential debate. Prediction markets, specifically predicted, showed a significant shift in odds as the debate progressed. Trump's chances of winning the presidency increased with his odds rising from around 53 cents to 63 cents within an hour. Conversely, Biden's odds dropped sharply from 48 cents to 37 cents, resulting in a 26 point difference between the two candidates. This change in odds was attributed to Biden stumbling through some of his answers and failing to complete sentences, which was noted by many viewers and pundits. Criticism of Biden's performance was rampant on social media, with commentators, including Trump, questioning Biden's coherency. Both candidates were reported to have made several false and misleading claims during the debate, according to CNN fact-checkers. Trump made misleading statements about abortion and other economic issues under Biden's presidency. Although not mentioned during the debate, Trump has recently made strong statements about cryptocurrency. In June, he promised to end Biden's war on crypto if elected in November. In March, he asserted his intention to make the United States a leader in crypto technology and criticized Biden for allegedly letting crypto die a slow and painful death. Biden's administration has also taken notable actions regarding cryptocurrency. On June 1st, Biden vetoed a resolution that would have allowed banks to hold crypto assets on their balance sheets. The resolution had passed through both the House and the Senate with majority favor. Biden defended his decision by stating that passing such legislation would jeopardize the well-being of consumers and investors. What do you think about this development? Let us know in the comments. Now, let's get back to more of what Gary Cardone has to say. So I don't need to talk about price. I think price is stupid. I own a bunch of Bitcoin. I need to have more Bitcoin tomorrow than I have right now. That's all I care about right now, okay? I need more Bitcoin. I need more Bitcoin. I could care less if the price is 35000 I mean, will it impact me? It'll impact me. I'll get a little nervous, and then I'll go sell everything. Everything else is sitting in fiat. Yeah, um, same. I mean, <laughs> same smash it. So I'll, I'll sell this house so fast. This is a one-way ticket. I just cannot tell you when the party really starts. I think it's going to be continue to be a violent ride because there's – too many weird people holding really cheap Bitcoin. Um, by weird, I mean, uh, I don't think they've really entered the real world. And, and like, I would love to meet with any and all of them. I'm, I'm not the enemy to them, but I, like, I hear people saying, I am never going to sell my Bitcoin. I think I can turn people around on that in 15 minutes. Okay, this is not cool that you don't want to sell your Bitcoin. We want... I need a billion dollars to fight with these people, bro. Like if you have $400 million, call me. Okay. I'll show you how we can just monsterly make change. Is a group of people with a 
boatload of money. You know, I get on a private jet, grab a couple of people, grab Kathy Woods, and we go to Washington. Everyone will listen to us, okay? Give a little money to some of these politicians that are doing something we don't want to do. You have to look at the enemy, okay? The enemy is playing this game very, very well. For us to sit there and go, I'm holding on to my Bitcoin. I'm going to stay in a third world country with 2G, no air conditioning. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. And you're like, dude, you're sitting on $400 million and it's doing nothing. You're not advancing society. You ain't doing any. Oh, okay, cool. El Salvador would be a great place. I think that's a great experiment. But like, let's go move to Turkey and do it. Turkey needs Bitcoin. I think Turkey goes, dude. I keep saying for a year and a half, Turkey is going to put Bitcoin on its balance sheet. Why? Because the guy is f- screwed. Dude. He's in the middle of f- Storm Alley. You know, he's got, he, he's, he's NATO's little, okay, but he needs all the European energy, the Asian energy, the, the Middle Eastern energy. He doesn't really, dude, he's in such a bizarre place, right? He's just boxed in from every angle. Him, the United Kingdom's in a similar position. It just, it's just going to take one or two smart. And, and look, who were going to end up in politics last year? I was just talking to this guy at the RNC. I said, dude, we need a bunch of 30-year-olds. You're 60. I'm 60. The 30-year-olds, let's put them in an office, and then let's be their alpha dog. Let's just mentor the heck out of them, keep them in line, you know, and let's build, a, let's build a great country again. Let's build a country based on business principles. We've done all the politics. Why don't you give us 20 years to do it business-wise? Run it like a business. P&Ls, budgets, who's winning, who's not winning. Oh, shit, Montana, you made a bunch of money. Wisconsin's failing. Make a bid for them. We don't need 52 states. Let's have 30. And, and, and if the guy in California can't run the damn state and the guy in Vegas can, give Vegas damn California and let them run it. Like, we must rewrite everything, okay? This is not going to be a little – this is going to be a massive step change. This is not about, hey, let's evolve into some kind of little evolution over 30 years. We don't have 30 years, okay? I'm not even sure we have three. It's clear that Gary Cardone truly believes in Bitcoin's long-term value despite its volatile nature. In fact, Cardone is so confident in Bitcoin that he's willing to sell assets, like his house, if he needed to buy more. He is fully aware that the journey with Bitcoin will be volatile due to various stakeholders holding it at different price points. He also reminds us about the importance of moving quickly and efficiently in business, including in Bitcoin investments. Cardone criticizes bureaucracy and advocates for a more agile approach to decision making. He stresses the importance of taking risks and being proactive in creating opportunities with Bitcoin. Cardone believes in the concept of luck as a preparation meeting opportunity. He believes in taking control of one's circumstances and making proactive changes, including in Bitcoin investments. He argues that people should not procrastinate and should take decisive actions to improve their lives, potentially through Bitcoin. Now guys, if you're watching this video, you're clearly interested in crypto. If you want to stay most up to date on the crypto and Bitcoin world, make sure to subscribe to my daily five minute crypto newsletter. It gives the latest expert predictions, any breaking news and top on chain analysis all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description to join over 60,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. Anyway guys, that's all for today's video. I hope it brought you some value. I'll see you all in the next one. And as always, all the best.